Yo, Elliot, I'm on week one of the program. I've been struggling to get my shit together. I'm leaving for college in two weeks, and I feel like I've lost motivation as I don't have a goal. I'm going to the gym and waiting to move out. I would like to hit the ground running when I move to college. Got any tips? Yeah, man. So you're literally going from one phase of life into another, right? You're going from what you've known so far, so long as you've been living in your mama and daddy's home, right? And in two weeks, you're going to move out and you're going to be living in an entirely different universe. All different surroundings, different people, different responsibilities, different lifestyle all together, right? And so when we find ourselves... <clears throat> about to cross that threshold, really. That's what you're doing. You're about to cross a, cross a threshold. Our imagination can run wild. Our imagination can run wild with all kinds of things that we, I want to do, I hope happens. Uh, even sometimes I'll do this. I'll dream of, I'll think about what it's going to be like when I get there, but it's all mental, ma mental masturbation. None of it is true. You're just, you're just lost in your imagination. And that, if you think about it, your imagination is like a small fire, right? The fire is kindling, right? This small imagination. I'm going to be getting married in two weeks. I get a new job in two weeks. I'm going away to college in two weeks. Whatever it is, it's over there. I'm over here, and I'm letting the fire kindle. Now, on top of that, when you are anxious about it, when you got feelings about it, when you're nervous about it, you add fuel to that fire. So the emotional, the emotional gasoline gets dumped on that mental fire, and you could get, you could just completely get, you could run away. Your imagination will run away, right? Say, how do I say that? Uh, run away with your imagination, right? You're gonna run away with your imagination, and sometimes that's fun, right? We do it because, in a way, it gives us this sense of groundedness. It gives us a sense of like, oh, I know what's going to happen or I can prepare for what's gonna happen. And like you say, I wanna hit the ground running when I move to college. What I'm going to invite you to do is to stop altogether and give yourself space. You say, I don't have motivation, I don't have a goal. You don't need motivation and you don't need a goal right now. You need to clean the slate, prepare your soul, tie your shoes, laces on a little tighter, gird up your loins and get ready for a whole new battle you're going to engage in. And again, you can't predict what that's going to be like, right? When we, when we, when when something is imminent in our life, we know it's coming, but we're not sure of the content of it. All we can do is wait to receive it. All we can do is allow it to unfold for us. Otherwise, when we try to get too involved with what's not even here yet, when we try to manipulate the future, man, we make ourselves even more anxious, more nervous, more worried, more, like you say right now, you're having this, this feeling of loss, right? Like, uh, 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 what am I doing? Well, I'll tell you what, you got two weeks right now, bro. You got two weeks to calm down, be present, and watch and wait. I know that's a hard thing to do, right? You say, I'm going to the gym, and I'm doing all this stuff. I don't say stop your life. Keep going to the gym. Keep doing what you normally do. But don't like jack yourself up about what's going to happen in the next two weeks and how it's going to unfold and what you're going to do and how you're going to hit the ground running. You say, I like to hit the ground running when you get there. You might hit the ground face, face down. You may face plant the ground. You don't know. You have no idea. You might get there and they say, oh, uh, Mr. Pizias, looks like you've got a, a, a hold on your account. And your funds didn't come through. And we don't have a room for you. What you going to do then? You're going to say, but I plan on hitting the ground running. And they're going to say, well, we're sorry, sir. You're going to have to start next week once we get this paperwork done, right? You have no freaking clue what's going to happen. You could get there and you could roommate with like a celebrity, right? Somebody that you've been following on YouTube or something like that, right? You get there and it's like, whoa. And it just throws your whole game off. And you're like, wow, I thought it was going to be good, but... This is even better, right? Again, it could be worse than you imagine. It could be better than you imagine. The whole point here I'm saying is to be neutral. Stay neutral. Stay cool, right? Like, 
when my son is learning how to play baseball right now, right? My son's learning how to play baseball. He's not the greatest athlete, but he's he's trying, and I appreciate his trying, his effort, right? He's willing to do anything, my boy. So we're taking him out to baseball practice, and I don't know anything about baseball. So we hire a baseball coach to teach my son how to play baseball. And one of the things the baseball coach says when he's playing in the outfield is he's got to sit in a new, he's got to sit and be ready. That means he's got to be kind of like bent in his knees, and he's got to have his hands with his mitt down by his side, right? Just, just he, said, he says to him, just stay there. Just wait right there in that ready position. you got to be in a ready position. I played linebacker sometimes when I was in college. What is it? Before the ball is snapped, you got to be in a ready position. But what's the ready position? The ready position is a calm, neutral space that allows you to make a powerful play when the time comes. So just as a linebacker standing there in a neutral position, just as my brother, my son, when he's out there playing shortstop and he's in neutral position, what are you doing? You're waiting for the play. You're, he's waiting for that, that crack of that bat, so that ball. And then so when that ball is hit, then and only then did he, does he know, okay, do I need to dip down and get the grounder? Do I need to run back and catch the pop fly or the linebacker? Do I need to come up and meet him in the hole? Or do I need to follow somebody out the line and follow? You see what I'm saying? Everything, every action is measured by or every action proceeds from a place of neutrality, a neutral place, an empty place. I'm going to start ranting now because this is pretty deep. This is, this is very important stuff. Empty space is not empty space. Empty space is a womb, right? What is a woman? A woman has a womb in her. She's got an opening and she's got an empty space. All empty space is pregnant with possibility, right? This woman is, and I'm using the body as an example, but everything that is empty is, is, is ready for possibility. But when something's full, then the, then the time-space continuum has already collapsed, right? Say there's already a baby in that woman. Well, then there's no other babies going to be happening there, right? But before the baby's there, there's pure potential. Before the ball is hit, there's pure potential. Before the ball is hiked with the linebacker, there's pure potential. Before you actually arrive on a college campus, there's nothing but pure potential. And what does the baby, what does the lady do when she's waiting for the baby? What does the linebacker do or the, or the shortstop do? Wait. Wait and see. But wait, it's a different kind of waiting than doing nothing, right? Just like the, the, the pregnant potential of the woman is that, that there's nothing happening there. It's just that potential is waiting to be unleashed. Potential is always waiting to be unleashed in empty spaces. So right now, if you want to, if you want to unfold the most powerful uh, potential in the situation that you find yourself in, you have to be relaxed. Imagine the imagine the football player or an athlete, right? Rather than being relaxed in their in their in their neutral state, they're like they're anxious and they're like. They can't sit still and they're like, every time somebody sneezes, they think that the ball was hit, right? Somebody drops a, drops a drink, boom, and that, the, uh, the, guy, the kid is like running around like, where's the ball, where's the ball? He's out of his mind. He's out of his mind. But how, much, how many times do we do that, right? Where we, the thing is not even here yet. The ball hasn't even been hit, hit yet, but we're making ourselves crazy running around. And then anything that like snaps, we're like, what, what, is that it? Is that it? Right? Too anxious, too much anticipation. Sit with potential, right? Sit in the tension that is potential, right? There's a, there's, a, there's a sort of tension in something that has potential, right? Because if that tension wasn't there, there'd be no energy. And where there's no energy, there's no potential. So what I'm saying is sit with the tension, right? Chill out. Chill out, allow the tension to be there without having to do anything. And most importantly, without judging yourself. You say, I feel like I've lost motivation and I don't have a goal. Both of those don't make any sense. Number one, you do have a goal. The goal is you go to college. And when you go to college, what do you do when you're there? Get the best fucking grades, right? You, that's, I think that's super important, right? Because if you're going to be... I'm not a fan of college. I'm not a fan of college. But if you're going to do it, just like when you're going to do anything in your life, your objective is to be the best. So you're going to college. What is your goal? To get a 4.0. There's no other goal than that. 
right? That's what you signed up for, right? Like, for example, when the baseball player goes to the base, you know, and he's you get ready to hit, he has he has one goal. By mere virtue of he walking up to the plate and standing there with the bat means my goal is to hit this ball out the park. You're going to college. It's the same thing. Your goal is to get there and hit that ball out the park, right? Now, you say motivation, right? You say, I've lost motivation. I don't have a goal. I'm going backwards because you do have a goal, but you don't need motivation right now. You need to relax right now. You need to not be anxious right now. You need to be open, willing to receive right now. You got to be allowing things to unfold and show themselves to you so then you can take action, right? A linebacker who anticipates if it's going to be a run instead of a, instead of a, a throw, he's going to throw himself off every time, right? If he anticipates, oh, it's going to be a run, it's going to be a run. And when the ball snapped, he runs up and he meets the lineman in the hole, but the ball is, is, is back here where he should have been. It's because he wasn't paying attention. He was anticipating because it, he was too motivated. This is a problem I had when I was a football player. I was too motivated as a, as a football player. I played When I played outside linebacker and nose guard, I had more sacks than anybody. I had, I had more quarterbacks than anybody in my league. I was, uh, I, I was rookie of the year, MVP, all kinds of shit, because I would knock the shit out of quarterbacks. But you know what I did, which was, wasn't right and used to get me in trouble just as much as it gave me gifts? I would anticipate. I would anticipate the snap, right? You know what? I had more sacks than anybody on my team, but you know what I also had? More offsides. More offsides. More offsides. Right? I could have avoided the offsides if I just waited, if I just paid attention, right? Rather than anticipating, right? So that's what I'm that's what I'm hoping you can understand and receive for yourself right now. Don't anticipate. Don't anticipate. Don't try to motivate. Don't try to create any goal other than that which you are doing, right, which is going to college. And when you say you want to hit the ground running, bro, you don't even know what that ground is going to look like. You have no idea if that's going to be gravel, it's going to be sand, it's going to be dirt, it's going to be rubber, it's going to be turf. You have no fucking clue. So you can't hit the ground running, right? You got to get there, check the ground out, and then decide what kind of shoes you got to put on so that you could dominate that day, dude. So I hope that helps, man. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. And then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.